Hello and welcome back to Checking God Archimedes Manor. Oh, come on. We are true heroes here. We are just saving the uh, old text that was written a long time ago that Archimedes just thoughtlessly hid in his vault. Harapo Epic, I, I guess that's how it's called. Maybe I'm wrong on that. One of these... Oh yeah, Harap Epic, we got it. And apparently they're gonna pay, pay quite a big bucks for it. At least I hope. Or else it was all for nothing. Yellow eye free. Oh, he's dead. Translucent crystal. Oh yeah, we probably needed the... Uh, some kind of, uh, I, I like that, just to solve the puzzle uh, downstairs, but we already dealt with that. So, it doesn't matter. No! After a sight. These thing, things take forever to die. Isn't doing the job. Let's go. Don't worry, ironclad construct. Just chill. What kind of chance to hit we have here? Pretty low. We can turn on the aim shot. Increasing the chance to hit significantly. That was about as useful as a bump on a pickle. I'm not even close. Come on, Iron King. Clad construct. Be mad. Uh, Doing some kind of shield skill. Oh no, never mind that. He's on his ass. <laughs> yep. Dead. Sorry about that Coolum guy. Not a problem, Captain. Do we have another one here? Oh, we only had one. What is this? Oh, the bedroom. This is how we get to the bedroom? Wait a second. Really? I I don't believe it. There must be some other way to get to the bedroom. It doesn't seem like it. Archimir, what the hell? Are you insane? My fingers be fat and easy breezy. Wet. Not only the bedroom is at the tippy top of your castle, and it takes quite the effort to get there, but you also have to go outside to go into your bedroom. Oh boy. You got anything good here? Swapped in sparkling. Tomorrow would have been belaying us for a rest by now. Oh, what? We might need to rest. Minor overseeing. Uh, yeah, we already have that. System shock. Archimir's old robe. Sure. It looks special, but is it really? It's just a really crappy uh, light armor. So we need to Does go it back. Suit you, being a soldier, I did well enough at it, but it was never for me. I like knowing that someone has a plan. Never felt it from the gods. You ever think? Maybe I put my faith in the wrong cause? Faith is what you feel in a given moment. Like a bird's feathers, it molts from time to time. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Well, but basically we looked at the entire place we should go. Uh, I have to say, I'm enjoying uh, uh, Maya's company. 
Wait a second. Yeah, we need to go down. So, question is, can we rest in here? Please tell me I can do it. We can rest! Uh, what you want? Fire kelp for some mites? Sure. You go for that. Let's rest. Is there any point going back to the... The shop? Just to... Oh no! I know what we need to do. We need to sell the Harap Epic. Somehow. I don't know what kind of... Uh, bucks we're gonna get for that. But I know we have... At least two Been buyers lined up. Cannon, uh, since the gentleman outsailed that Rawatai scow off of Hisongo, if I rightly recall. Uh, sharing a crew saves me a bullet I'll need elsewhere, so thanks. <gasps> Any time, lass. Alright. So. Return the artifact to Tumara Natahi. Brass Citadel. Or in front of the Kahanga Palace. Okay. We have no mission at the Serpent's Crown. Uh, the Galat. Oh, we definitely have missions at the Galat. Perk is Overlook. We have no missions here. So either we go to the Brass Citadel, Imperial Command, or Kahanga Palace. Good question. I think people just hate me at the Imperial Palace. Or that's very... Much the impression I got. Hmm. Should we check out the special raiments? Ugh, force raiments. It's not really a catchy name, is it? I would just name it Armor Shop here. Like, that's really uh to the point. Uh, See anything of interest? Yeah, but show me what you got. S that's complete trash. I need something special. Nagati's girdle. No, this is not what we want. We want special stuff. None of this trash you're selling. I can get into trouble with him by trying to loot his stuff. I don't know. Not sure if I wanna care too much about thieving. The thing is, you can always just have a character that's good at uh, stealing and switch to that character just to do the the thieving and uh, just switch back later. But that's not exactly how I wanna roll. Bree his metal work. Yeah, I think we wanted to pick up something here. I'm not sure if we have the money for it. Like, we would like to pick up something, like, just really nice. Like, something legendary. But just if gonna stay with us. Steel, maybe even something lighter. We got Spearcaster here, which is a superb rune bolt. Yeah, this is not particularly interesting. Exceptional. Grants capture. That's kind of trash. Lover's embrace. Stealth attacks. Yeah, I don't know. You have something... Oh, yeah, this is what I was thinking of. Tutolio. Tutil... Tutilo's palm. Counts as an offhand weapon. Oh, that's interesting. So you can use this with like... Dual wield, I guess? Plus one wounds when damage with melee weapons? Oh, this is really good for... Uh, a monk, I guess. Legendary. Yeah, this is it. Now, this is a really good armor. 
but also it's a really expensive armor <laughs> so the most expensive stuff I have is a superb EV plus two resolve and resistance to resolve reflections so the entire team is gonna uh, get plus two deflection if I use EV some kind of special scimitar that's actually pretty damn bad poison dipped I, I think that might be just uh, uh, shown incorrectly but still doesn't look particularly interesting what kind of sale price does this have? it's possible that we can buy this breastplate yeah what kind of enchants we can do on this? Yeah, that's just garbage. So we can sell the Cabalist uh, Gambeson with that. Exceptional rods, exceptional. Maybe like sell like at least one exceptional rod. Boots of speed, don't care. Obsidian lamp figurine, don't really care. Exceptional light armor. These are basically identical. Exceptional light armor. These are all exceptional. And they can be enchanted. Exceptional leather armor. It's all like, hey, well, how much you wanna sell? Exceptional medium shields. Hmm. Exceptional swords. I don't really want to sell everything, but we can sell some things. Exceptional battle axe. Fine crossbow, then that's garbage. That could be good. Like fine rods, those are obviously have to go. So anything that's fine is basically garbage at this point. Uh, yeah, we want to sell it all. Fine mail armor. All. Fine leather armor. Fine hide armor. Yeah, we're gonna keep that. Fine wand. It's kind of crappy. Fine scepter. Fine saber. But anything fine is basically going away. I'm gonna keep one pistol though. Archibuses, I don't know why these things are so valuable, but that just makes setting them even uh, juicier. So maybe we're gonna pick up this breastplate. So we're gonna make a little bit of money. And now he has quite the collection of stuff. Like that armor is pretty damn good come on take it out we can also enchant it further health restore per 3 seconds for 9 seconds on critical hit with weapons grant self mending huh. it's crazy so that armor is just really good yeah this is really good okay who wants to have the other breastplate now now this is the Daltro's cage is just straight up better exceptional best breastplate well electricity power levels Actually, that might be something we want. <sighs> so maybe we're gonna keep Daltro's cage on the main character. But uh, Devil of Karak breastplate is definitely a, a good choice. Max power pool. Now we can just give it to Seraphim. 
it's uh, quite a big upgrade. Anyway, uh, I usually try to avoid trading because it can be just uh, very time consuming and there's not much happening. But of course, like, it's kind of part of the game. So, we need to sell the Harap epic and make huge bucks. The question is, who do we sell it to? And maybe more of a question is, like, are we actually selling it? Because if not, I would be very disappointed. I'm just gonna go down to the Brass Citadel. Is there a way to just go inside? Well, not really. Just, just, just not go inside any of the, the buildings. Just, just uh, pop in, say hi. Because I think that's what we're gonna need. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of other missions we have in the Brass Citadel. Uh, but this alone should be uh, good enough. I don't care too much about. I don't know. I don't like any of the. I don't know. I don't like the queen. I don't really like the... Well, I suppose, like, the kind of trying to do some kind of job. But I don't like any of the parties involved uh, currently. <laughs> well, I already expressed it quite uh, obviously. Disturbing dreams. Makes it hard to sleep. I killed a bunch of Valian traders. So... Brass Citadel. Speak with Hazauni at the Brass Citadel. Hazanui Karu leads the Raitayan forces in the region through the Royal Death Fire Company. Right to yeah, yeah, yeah. It may be in my best interest to meet with her to see where our interests converge. And. Oh, Maya has a mission. What? Tikawara? Atsuri has given Maya a task to carry out while she's in my service, delivering missives to uh, Reptayan operatives around the death fire. Maya assures me that the missives are nothing more than bureaucratic paperwork. So we don't have to do a damn thing here. But Atsuri is the one that gave the mission. But we do need to meet with Hazanui Karu. Okay. But we are mainly here just to sell the Horapu epic. Emaini? Yeah, this is the guy that is just too good for me. He doesn't want to be. I still can't let you through. Diplomacy? What? 12 bluffing? Yeah, that's not gonna work. I would need to be one hell of a bluffer. What do you need? I still can't let you through. Oh, right. Fool, I still can't let you through. Okay. Done and done. That's very interesting. This is what I was actually uh, considering. That... Uh, conversation skills of your teammates don't really matter. Like, for example, we got uh, passive skills here. They are more, more li most, most likely help with that. You can't uh, actively use their, their skills unless it really comes to a check. Like in a, in a text adventure. And I'm not sure if passive skills ever really checked there. Sometimes, yes, I, I believe, like, sometimes checked, like, you can select a character with, like, highest survivor or something like that, but it's very rare. Yeah. No hmm. problem. So I need to have uh, more diplomacy and, bu and bluff. The Ranga Nui leads us, but he represents Isn't all this the guy? Of Rao Tai. Then must he put his name on everything? Price share is simpler. For what do you squawk and gloat over a heap of stones? Akira, 
Your Italians are strange cousins indeed. A well-dressed Juana woman shakes her head at a Rautaya man. The tone of her one of their debate is spirited, but not unfriendly. The brass Citadel is a marvel of modern engineering. With the gates barred and the cannons primed, it can withstand any attack and weather any storm. Yeah, and his Juana friend turned to regard you. Surely you can see what a fine stronghold this is. This is an excellent fort, sturdy and built to last. I'm sure someone once said the same about the ancient places in Deadfire, before storms and volcanoes made ruins of them. We transformed a rocky cove into the best defended harbor in Nekataka. Such achievements must be celebrated. This rocky cove was once a prized fishing spot for the Riparu. Oh, I see why that could be a problem. These Rauataians act as if every bare islet is merely awaiting a fort or a farm. They cannot look at anything without planning to change it. To strive is to survive. Those who would achieve greatness must make the world a better, more ordered place than they found it. Why change the world when you can learn to live in it the way it is? This is what my people have done for thousands of years. Oh boy. Of course it's noble and worthwhile to build great things. Even the mightiest works crumble, why waste blood and sweat on them? I'm definitely with the guy here. We should ask what provides the greatest benefit, a fishing spot or a harbor? Yeah. The world is bigger than us, it does not need our hand to guide this change. Yeah, let's just put it out there, fishing spot or harbor. Must we sacrifice the needs of the few to the whims of the many then? She spreads her hands to you in question, but she isn't angry. Well, at least she realizes that it's better. Akira, nothing invigorates like a good discussion. Thank you for indulging us. She grins. With that, they turn from you and resume their discussion. Whoa, clearing her throat uh, once and then again, Maya raises her eyes to yours when you glance over. Oh, um... You wanted something, Captain? No. You were the one trying to get my attention. What, me? Maya chuckles and crosses her arms. I'll go ahead and say it. You're halfway toward all right. <laughs> what? Just because I, I... I don't know what I did. I was pretty neutral with those guys. Maya purses her lips and appraises you up and down. Thank you, I think? Ooh, we, we better give a compliment back. This is my nightmare. Receiving a compliment. I suppose it's it's better to uh, just say thanks than give a half-assed compliment back. That's perhaps not true. You're not too shabby yourself, soldier. Complimenting back is fine. If you actually have a compliment in mind. If not... But again, this is just all flattery. Who cares? I guess th time to time it's nice to hear, but... Yuck. All the time. Just halfway? Is that really all? That's just... That's just a jerk thing to say. Thank no, you're not too shabby yourself, soldier. From what I've seen. Oh, I know. But it's kind of you to say. Oh, nice. Have you ever... <sighs> Dumb question, but here I go anyway. I love the dumb questions. Maya folds her arms and shifts her weight from one foot to, ano to another. You ever gotten close to someone, even though it just wasn't... ordinary? You mean, like with another woman? <laughs> what? <laughs> the god stepped on me once. <laughs> you, you mean, like with another woman? If that's your idea of out of the ordinary, then you need a lesson, my friend. <laughs> I know, but you gotta go with the... Uh, damn. The most likely... Uh... Answer, I suppose. Below deck, there are only two rules. Keep it interesting and remember your bitter squash. Okay. She pats a pouch at her side. What I'm talking about is a scenario where a difference in rank can get in the way of enjoying shore leave. How did this 
conversation about fishing spot versus harbor turned into some kind of a... Uh, whatever this is. Talking about banging with Maya. <clears throat> ah, you mean a thirst between captain and crew? Has someone been a very bad sailor? <laughs> <laughs> I think I see where this is going. Let's keep it professional, okay? There's someone being a very bad sailor. Ugh, this is like picking oakum. <laughs> Maya rolls her eyes. I'm just testing the direction of the wind here. Best not to overthink it. Well, the defiant captain makes the rules. Every other night, naked night. And getting drunk. The winds are calm, but they've been known to shift unexpectedly. Rank is important. Complications tend to get in the way. On the Defiant, the captain gets to make the rules. Exactly, I don't give a damn about rank. Interesting answer. I like the sound of that authority. Ah, uh, okay. I've enjoyed that sort of arrangement before. Nothing to suggest I won't enjoy it again someday. <laughs> Damn, we can't speak plainly. Maya plants her hands on her hip and smiles to herself. Hypothetically speaking, of course. I don't think so. Um, Are you saying, Garvey? Captain, what did I just tell you about not overthinking this? What? Okay. Well... I've laid out my thoughts. You must have a couple. I'm flattered, but let's keep this professional. I'm the worst guy. Because I want to get with everybody. I like you, Maya. Let's see where this goes. Be a pleasure, Captain. The edges of Maya's mouth crack with a repressed smile. The funny thing is, is that Ishii can get particular about people. Maya glances down at her bird, hiding a tiny smile. And when he doesn't take to someone, Neither do I. Okay. List. Uh, get bird food. Some seeds. What exactly does Ishiza look for in a special friend? <laughs> so I need to seduce the bird first. You're saying that someone would have to cozy up with your bird too? <laughs> I have to know how that works. You're the one with the spyglass into people's souls. You tell me how it works. Not everyone's a bird lover. That's fine. Some days I can't stand another second of Captain Stink Feathers. But Ishii and I are never parted for longer than a few breaths. Take that however you will. I think that's great. Can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I'd like to speak with your bird. Try not to use any foul language. Chuckling to herself, Maya steps back and gives you a space. What? I'm actually speaking with the bird? Perking up at attention, Ishiza takes a cautious hop closer. He tips his head to the side and fixes you with a scrutinizing glare. Who's a good bird? Letting out a high-pitched warble, Ishiza tucks his beak in among his wing feathers. You take this to mean that he's a very good bird. Try, try to read Ishiza's soul. No sooner do you bridge the distance to Ishiza's soul than he turns his cold, mismatched gaze toward you. The force of his attention hits you like a whip. Well, this is unexpected. What? A voice cuts through the din of your thoughts, a feminine one. Accompanied by the sound of feathers rustling against each other. Hylia? First Andra, now you? Are any of the gods not spying on me through my crewmates? <laughs> Hylia? Glancing in your direction, Maya frowns as you to all outward. Uh, as you two all outward appearances whisper to yourself. What exactly did you set out to accomplish by peering into the soul of this noble creature? Ishiza cocks his head. Maya suggested that Ishiza and I get on better terms. I thought 
that if I got the bird to like me, then Maya would like me too. Noble, are we talking about the same Ishiza? What are you doing here? I am asking the question. How? I'm getting to know the bird. I see. A sly breeze ruffles Ishiza's feathers. You must put a great deal of faith in Maya to find yourself in this situation. Are you so certain that she deserves your trust? What? What's your problem? The prospect of sharing her company. I can tell from here that it intrigues. Hi, Leah. Don't try to turn this around on me. Far be it from me to judge affection. Better that it bloom or wilt uninterrupted. Hylia lets out the wistful sigh that manifests as a cool breeze around your neck. While the dead fire is being cut, cauterized, and trampled, it is charming to find someone who makes time for such elaborate foreplay. Any advice that could help me out there? What's your take on Maya? I assume it's... <laughs> okay. Upon catching her name being spoken, Maya furrows her brow and glances your way again. She seems on the verge of speaking up, but then shakes her head and resumes her business. Imagine how weird this must look like. Do you often turn to birds for relationship advice? Nah, this is the first. I sense that Maya does not easily allow others into her confidence. <laughs> she is observing you closer than you might guess. Yeah. Probably this exchange is hard to miss. She has much on her mind. This may all be a whimsical diversion. That, or she is softening you up for the red work of her masters. Mm. That's definitely uh, an option. Or, didn't you know? Know what? Perhaps it isn't for me to say. All in good time. Ah, I babble. What does the goddess of creativity know of kith courtship? Ishiza tips his head to the side and winks. I answered your question, now you answer mine. What are you doing in Ishiza's soul? Observing. The one you call Ishiza makes for a convenient lens into your travels. Maya, I hate to say this, but... You know, the bird you really like and it's been your life for a long time and you consider that a friend and perhaps it's the most important creature in your life damn i don't know how to say this but he might be uh dinner the dinner tonight how, how do i convince you that hylio is spying on you try not to take it too personally any advice that could help me out here I can say for certain that this is a very hungry, overworked, and at times underappreciated bird. Aww. Shiza spreads open his wings, studying his own plumage with evident curiosity. He and Maya share that much in common, at least. Beyond that, I leave the rest up to you. You receive the mental impression of an amused shrug. I guess we're finished now. Best of luck in your mating ritual, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Hylia. The presence pulls away and you find yourself once again staring into the eyes of an alert, if less in intelligent, Ishiza. Try to feed Ishiza. As you open your pack, Ishiza hops closer, craning back his head to observe with interest. That was my plan all along, just, just feed the bird and done. He turns away disappointed, scratching at the ground with his talons. Evidently, you aren't carrying anything he wants. Well, beyond. Uh, that we will, bird. Shiza. I hope that was as amusing for you as it was for me. Uh, I have some questions. I've got some answers. What? What? I have so many questions. You're one of Kana's siblings, aren't you? Sure am. And I heard that you two spent some time together. Funny how the gods toss things together. I didn't like him much. 
kind of came back from the Deerwood with a head full of ideas about Rawatai's expansion. Getting out from under the academics suited him. I never knew he could be so political. More than his sister ever could be. You clearly had some sway on his opinions, more than I ever did. Wish you had told Kana to give up on the poetry. He's got no ear for it. I did my best to help Kana find the meaning he sought. You kept him alive in any case, while he wandered the lands in search of stories. Maya huffs, shaking her head. I do with bullets what Kana did with words. Just in case you were wondering, the comparison ends there. Mm. I'll be thinking, let's take it slow and go back to being shipmates. Hello, Shiza. Who's a good bird? <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what does Ishizo like to eat? Trying to get on his good side, are you? Maya nods, amused. Oh, he's developed a taste for shark meat since we arrived at the dead fire. What? Going back to the Rawatayan diet will be hard on us both. She sighs and plants her hands on her hips. Shark? Tell me about your family. Well, my parents came from the dead fire. I'm getting a taste of my roots. I exhales and glances away. After they emigrated to Rawatai, their talents caught the Ranganui's eye. He saw them as this spectacle, this achievement of the old country, I guess. So they were honored guests. Not many Huana rose to distinction in Takoa. We were also curiosities. Even as we broke the same bread and tossed back the same wine, the Ranganui's friends always checked under the table to see if I had a tail. Kana thought it was hilarious. You don't write? No, I don't. Can't speak for all the tribes, though. Growing up in the Ranganui's shadow wasn't all bad. We had tutors and advisors at our disposal and lots of folk from stranger parts than these. I spent my days learning to shoot while my more academic siblings learned to express themselves. I leave you to judge who spent their time better. Hmm. I do value... Well... I guess what you well what you learned was practical. How did you and the Shiza first get acquainted? Ah, let let's be off. Anyhow, I want oh tomorrow. She wants the Harapu epic. You want it? All this trouble over a tablet of fucking stone. If my company standing wasn't on the line, I would have written this one off as a loss already. Why give the tablet? That's insane. I have questions about the Harap epic. It's a handsome piece of rock, which some call valuable. I won't dispute that point if the value goes to Rawatai. Back to my previous Time question. Me. I'm looking forward to the day when the Harapo epic is someone else's concern. Why do I give it to you? Why not like, hey, I have this tablet for big bucks. You want it? Give the tablet. I retrieved the tablet from Archimedes Manor. After all the trouble and effort, somehow I never expected this day would come. She has the table, ta tablet and grins, tucking it away. My thanks on behalf of the Royal Deadfire Company. We remember our friends and... And what in Remergon's hairy backside is that? She squints as... An approaching figure makes itself known with a with a harsh clearing of its throat. Imp? Hey, you the watcher? Yeah, that's me. Good. If I delivered message to wrong person, Master would curse me with Archimere's annoying song that never gets out of your head. Archimere, the great master, has returned. Invites you to join him at the estate. Says you know where that is. No idea. The imp lets out a harsh, discordant chuckle, holding his claw in front of his mouth to hide a mischievous grin. What's this about? Oh no, Master doesn't tell us imps anything. I'll be there. I won't need to. He already knows. <laughs> Find Master in his stuff. Don't be late. The imp winks at you and flutters away. It would seem the old wizard is more observant than I credited him. Just wonderful. Tomorrow squeezes the bridge of her nose. More observant? 
I I moved. Well, I I stole everything. No, no, no. What's the good way to say it? Well, I basically took all his stuff. Anything that wasn't nailed down, I took it. Never mind. The company has assets enough to recompense him. What matters is that the tablet is ours, and the path to Okaizo made clearer. Like you recompensed me for the for acquiring the tablet. You never brought up Ukaizo before, Umara. Have you ever considered that you never stopped to ask? It's hardly my fault if you didn't know what you were getting yourself involved in. Mm. What do you reckon the odds are Archimir wants to congratulate us for a robbery well done? It's not a robbery. Stop calling it a robbery. We, we were never there. It was... It was just a coincidence. We of course know where he lives. <laughs> Robbery, well done. <laughs> Damn. Uh, where's this guy? Or woman or whoever he is. She is. We need... We need well, I don't know. I, I can check the quest log. Uh, that's gonna give us more information. It's... The Brass Citadel. Speak with Hazanui Karu. That's what we need. Question is, where the hell is the guy? So bore me. Oh, they let me in. Hazanui Karu. Azunui Karu paces near her desk, looking like a shark circling the shallows. She clenches a long, elegant pipe between her teeth, the smoke trailing an acrid vague behind her. She looks up when you enter and favors you with a brief nod of acknowledgement. The former lady of Cadnua, and one time terrifier of harbor masters, if dockside tales are to be believed. At your pleasure, she smiles briefly through the smoke. You have not brought much good news of late. I bought you a dump tablet. Her pensive look returns. So, in addition to pirates, profiteers, and slavers, the dead fire has a vengeful god roaming its waters? Mm. Not if I can do anything about it. Good. Because the last thing the archipelago needs is another disaster tugging at the seams. He must be stopped. She halts, turning to face you. You're finally able to get a good look at her. She's not especially large for an Almana, but she carries her shoulders high. Her weathered face looks to have seen many storm blown and some beaten days on, on deck, yet her eyes are sharp and keen. He's a giant made of living Adra that can absorb souls in an instant. Got any ideas? <laughs> Anything can be stopped with sufficient force. The problem is finding the will to deploy it. She watches you, her eyes bright with calculation. The Valians won't lift a finger if it isn't to snatch a coin. And the Huana will barely do that much. No one takes charge to solve the big problems. But... Perhaps we could work together to our mutual benefit. She takes the pipe in her left hand. As she does, you notice that her right is unusually still. Perhaps we could. What do you mean? Look around. Dead fires full of fertile, temperate islands. Except for Andra's mortar. It's largely free of rough weather. She waves her right hand, and you notice again that her fingers remain strangely still. You realize it's an unusually fine prosthetic. Yet much of it is uninhabited. Itinerant tribes drift between some of the islands, and smugglers and slavers cluster around the rest. She shakes her head. It's a waste. Imagine what this place could be, with well-guarded shipping routes. How many Rawatayans we could feed with plantations here. So you're exploiting that fire for the sake of Ruatai? I don't see how you're much different from the other powers here. 
raspy laugh rattles from her chest. The Valian Trading Company wants to leech every last coin they can from the dead fire, no matter the eventual cost. They're little more than thieves. The Principi are actual thieves, <laughs> out of their pretensions of nobility. <laughs> yes, I know. Aye, and honest about it besides. Also talented, charismatic, and spectacular betwixt the sheets. The Hazanui briefly grabs at him as if he's proved her point. And the Juana are happy to let them all pick away at their fractured empire. Yeah. We're interested in building something here. Pipe in hand, she gestures expensively. What does it have to do with me? I'm not one for wanton cruelty. But I think you can appreciate that hard decisions need to be made. Oh, and you won't shy away from them. Well. If you're chasing the god who's stomping this place into the ground, then we have a common goal. And if you're going to survive here, then you could use an ally. A hint of smell tugs her lips from her tar-stained teeth. What do you have in mind? I'm asking for the fifth time. The disaster at Hasongo remains a key concern. We rely on the port there to ship food back to Rawatai. Do I need a reminder on Rawatai? The powerful naval kingdom of the Rawatai is dominated by coastal Almana and ruled by Oranganui, currently most prosperous of the old empires. Rotai has expanded aggressively into the Deathfire Archipelago to secure nature, natural resources that are scarce in their native storm-torn land. Uh, tough folk, dwarves and orlans can be found in Rotai. Most are merchants or remnants of the old kingdoms Rotai conquered when they seized power centuries ago. Legends say that the Rotaians came to their lands from the Deathfire Archipelago in the wake of a terrible cataclysm, but the details of that event have been lost to, to time and the imagination of uh, storytellers. She sucks on her pipe, hiding her worried expression behind a cloud of smoke. That's on hold until you investigate. Short of that, there are other matters that demand attention. You've already spoken with Atsura. For now, I suggest you continue to work with him. I might have something for you later. What's the game board for? Hazatoa. Atsura and I usually have a game running. And this one's been going on for over a month and a half. Atsura's good at misdirection. But I've got a mind for the long game. You look like you've come with a purpose. What happened to your hand? She extends her arm, holding the prosthetic between you. It's an ex exquisite... A piece with reinforced joints in each of the fingers and smooth sanded finish. It happened a year into my first command. We were chasing pirates along Rawatai's south coast, and they landed a shot right next to our magazine. A lucky hit. She's quiet for a moment. I ran below. The fire was already spreading and making for our powder stores. What did you do? I smothered what I could with my uniform, pulled the rest away with my own hands. Hmm. At least you gotta keep one of them. At, at least you got to keep one of them. Actually, I'm not sure what to say here. There must have been another way. Like, you don't really know in that situation. If you hadn't, you and your crew would have probably died. She nods. We don't get to choose our challenges, do we? Just the way we meet them. There's a cost to every victory. And the win goes to those willing to make a sacrifice. She considers the wooden hand, doing it in the light. You sense satisfaction in her gaze. I'll bet you already know a thing or two about that. And if you don't, dead fire will teach you soon enough. Very well. So we all, not, not all, but mostly leveled up. Okay, there's nothing else to do here. We need to leave. 
Anyway guys, uh, this is a good time to take a break, so thanks for watching and see you next time.